Alright, hello my friends, and welcome back to another Brotato class guide. Today we're covering the Farmer. So the Farmer is an economy class, pure and simple. You get 20 harvesting, you get your harvesting increasing by an additional 3% every wave. That's an additive 3%, so it means 8% every wave, rather than the normal 5%. You get plus 1 harvesting whenever you pick up a consumable, one of the fruits on the ground, or a crate, while at maximum health. But like many economy classes, you get minus 50% materials from enemies. I think there's really only one sort of natural build for the farmer, although I will note that you could very easily play it as a character that just relied on harvesting and used spears or shotguns. That would be a totally reasonable build. But to really lean into the character's build options and the spirit of the character, we're going to go with the pruner. Pruner generates gardens, gardens generate consumables, consumables generate harvesting. What's not to love? On this character, the most important thing in these early waves, more than clearing the enemies efficiently, is to not take damage. Wow, that one dropped a uh, fruit for us, which is really good. We also want to make sure that we are actually picking up every fruit before the end of the wave while not taking any damage, because then the amount of harvesting that we get is going to be increased more. Like that, that harvesting that we just gained during the wave will be increased additionally by the amount of harvesting we're increasing at the end of the wave. So it's really important to do that so we can start building up our harvesting values early. Let's in fact grab more harvesting. And then here I'm going to just reroll this whole mess. We're looking for the pruner. Grab this again. Pruner also really good because it's a support weapon, so it, you guessed it, it increases your harvesting. I'm going to roll past the coffee and the duct tape, both of which we would take, but we really just want to find more pruners here, so I want to maximize that possibility. And here I will lock the broken mouth, because that's going to be particularly valuable for this character, and we can lock a pruner. Was hoping to find a fourth one of these, because that would enable our harvesting to grow even more, but three is not bad. Definitely want to make sure we're breaking trees. Every damage you take on this character means fewer consumables that you pick up at full health, so it means less harvesting. Let's continue to grab this. If we can get up to about 100 early, that will be kind of where we want to be at. I'll take some maximum HP. Grab this. Three melee damage would be very valuable, but more important is defensive stats at this point, so I'm going to keep rolling. Grab this. Roll. And we've got all six. The most important thing, of course, is that we get all six, because that maximizes our support bonus, and that amount of harvesting can, can begin to grow immediately. Pickup range, you might think, would be really good for this character, but is actually not as good as it sort of seems. I'm going to throw in a reroll here, and we'll lock another pruner, and I'll lock coffee, because I rolled past it earlier because we were so desperate to find the right weapons, but it's still a super efficient item. The goal for this character, because enemies are worth less, is primarily just to build purely defensively, rely on your harvesting to pick up items. Oh no, I took damage. Taking four damage is actually kind of the worst amount of damage I could have taken too because it means that I had to waste multiple consumables to heal back to full and start gaining additional harvesting. Here we're going to grab just flat melee damage and I'm actually going to take HP regeneration here. If you can get your regeneration to a decent amount early, then that will increase the number of consumables you're picking up at full health. Let's upgrade our pruner. Grab coffee and maximum HP, and then this isn't a, an amazing item for us, but still, you know, we get a four cash discount on it. I'll I'll take it. Gonna reroll this mess. Lock in this fertilizer. One thing that's worth considering on this character is you could go for an elemental sub theme. So let's imagine that we take the flamethrower and the landmines and look for elemental damage, we sacrifice one support weapon, but then we can pick up elemental damage and percent damage, and the flamethrower will help us clear the enemies so consistently. Because flamethrower is such a good weapon, uh, landmines, I'm not going to lock, although I would take them, but I think they're 
pretty valuable if we had found Scared Sausage already and could go into sort of an elemental damage build. But the Flamethrower, because it's such a high tier weapon and gives us so much, so many options for just using elemental damage to clear enemies, is worth taking this early. A single Flamethrower will basically solve all of our killing enemies problems, especially in combination with this ugly tooth that slows them down. So I think this is actually a really good find for us and we can use the elemental, an elemental sub-theme on this version of the character in order to win. You certainly don't need to do this, but one of the things that this character struggles with, of course, is actually killing enemies. And so finding a, a single item that solves that problem more or less single-handedly, as the flamethrower does, is a really solid gift. So now we can just build snake and fire weapons oh no we didn't weren't able to break that tree but our harvesting is really good and i'll take this elemental damage and this elemental damage and now the flamethrower actually does incredible damage for us we do lose a little bit of harvesting but we still have 113 grab this grab this grab this and roll again and roll once more see if we can lock anything in that's particularly good uh, I will lock this flamethrower and we'll probably go to two level to a level three flamethrower rather than two level two flamethrowers. And even though we have 50% reduction from uh, income reduction on enemies, I'll still take the gentle alien because that is just a really efficient item. Flamethrower is so good because it just clears enemies all by itself. It's also really nice with lifesteal, should we happen to pick any of that up. Obviously, it doesn't do a ton of damage on its initial attack, but every subsequent attack, or every subsequent burn, and the burning spreads incredibly efficiently across groups of enemies, the flamethrower becomes an incredibly efficient item for clearing large groups of enemies. So I'm kind of happy that I found this and can actually show off the flamethrower. It's hard to find builds that it fits in, but it's an incredibly powerful weapon. I'm just going to take 5% uh, damage here, and then I think I will just go to a level 3 flamethrower because we don't need to apply multiple burning to enemies, so we'll just upgrade this, and that increases the burning damage. Grab this, and yeah, I want this, and because it only cost me 20, I'll take the landmines. We can use that should we happen to find Scared Sausage later on to apply additional burning to enemies. Leather Vest, of course, is an excellent item. Let's go to wave 6. So now I'm looking for lifesteal because we have this very rapid fire weapon. I'm looking, of course, for elemental damage. We'll still take melee damage and so on, but... For the most part, the flamethrower will see us through the entire game by itself. Tanked some damage there, unfortunately, so I missed out on a couple points of harvesting. Let me actually just take 9% speed. Now I don't need to take any more speed, and I'll grab this. I am going to grab the plus damage and roll again. Um, crit chance and elemental damage, sure, I'll take that. We don't use ranged damage, but the elemental damage will be valuable. And here I'll take this bag. I'll lock the pocket factory as well because we are looking for scared sausage later on. So pocket factory can combo with that. And of course, let's not forget that we can actually attack with our pruners. We don't have to just use the flamethrower, but the flamethrower is going to provide most of our wave clear for 
the rest of this game, pretty much. Took a lot of damage there. I would love some consumable healing. You might think we're not using consumables for healing, so they're not... Consumable healing would be less valuable. Great item to find, obviously. Um, but it's incredibly important on this character because as you pick up consumables, you really want them to get you back to full health, not to place you... Uh, not to have to use multiple consumables, because every consumable you use to actually heal reduces your harvesting gained. This is a very difficult shop. I want all of these items. I'm going to take maximum HP, and then here I'm going to reroll, and I'll take 20 luck. We have no luck. A level 4 luck is really good. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to grab the baby gecko because our range is pretty bad, and flamethrower actually does benefit from increased range, but I'll still buy the head injury. Um, continue to buy some... HP regen, although we also do want lifesteal. Maybe that was a mistake, actually. And then I'll buy this. Lock this, because our speed is really good, so armor is definitely the thing that we're missing the most of. The advantage to flamethrower, one of the many advantages to flamethrower is that it burns for a really long time. Like, it's, uh, I think, six instances of the burning effect. So you can set something on fire and then just run away immediately, and that's super powerful. So, for example, that tree should be dead by the time we get back. Oh, I guess we actually hit it with our pruners, not the flamethrower, so it didn't... It, it was burning from the scared sausage fire, not the flamethrower fire. That 10 damage I took at the end was really bad. Uh, I'm going to reroll this. Our harvesting is really good, and I really just want to find some more elemental damage. Let me roll this again. Yeah, we'll just take more elemental damage. And in fact, I am going to go to two flamethrowers here and only four pruners. This is not a normal farmer build, but it's the one in front of us, and I think it's a really good one, so I'm going to go for it. Two flamethrowers obviously have the problem of overwriting one another with the damage, but flamethrower, unlike the other burning weapons, the attacks frequently enough that the just normal one damage attacks from it are actually quite valuable. Uh, also, obviously, it can apply across more enemies if it's attacking in multiple directions at once. At this point, wave 9 or so, I like to stop focusing on picking up the consumables. I'm still going to do it when the option becomes available easily, but for the most part what we're doing is just trying to avoid taking damage and we'll gain our harvesting at the end of the wave. I think you'll typically do better and gain more money if you focus on just avoiding getting hit rather than trying to maximize the number of consumables you're picking up during the wave. Take more elemental damage for sure and more maximum HP. We'll take this and this and snake is obviously incredible. Crit chance still doesn't do anything for us, so I'm going to roll past it. Lumberjack shirt alongside the pocket factory is great. Let's keep rolling. I don't really want this lifesteal in exchange for elemental damage, so I'm hoping to find some other way to gain lifesteal. 12 damage, sure, I'll take that. And we still don't use ranged damage, so... Cute Monkey, even though it's less effective on this character than on other characters because there are fewer materials on the ground, the whole point of this character is to be at full health all the time to maximize the amount of harvesting you're gaining from consumables. Whetstone is the perfect item, as is Shady Potion and Compass. Yep, all of these are incredible. We're going to end up with kind of a elemental damage and engineering sub-theme to this character, because we got the Pocket Factory Lumberjack Shirt combo, and we got all these flamethrowers. 
which we're just using to carry the whole run by themselves. And something that's worth looking out for on these characters, especially the economy-focused characters that don't really need specific weapons to thrive, is how can I make... how can I integrate the types of items that I might be finding into my builds? The downside to the burning build, of course, is that it takes a little while for the burning to tick, so we do sometimes take some additional damage, but they, the items attack so fast that that's not a huge problem. I'm actually going to take 45 range here. Uh, the two flamethrowers will benefit a ton from that. We'll take the weird food. Yeah, I'm just going to buy this whole shop. It's awesome. And wow, we get to upgrade our pruners quite a bit here, so let's grab that and combine and I'll get the level one and lock the level three. At this point, I wouldn't mind switching to just one level four flamethrower, I think, because we have a snake already, so the multiple flamethrowers applying damage across more enemies is much less relevant than it is without a snake. There's some argument for wanting two flamethrowers before you have snake, but after you have snake I think you just always want one. That loot alien is, is really doing its best to evade me, so I need to get in here with my flamethrowers, light the dang thing on fire. Come on. All right, we got them. Harvesting continuing to increase as well. Triangle of Power actually pretty good for this character because you so heavily want to avoid taking damage. And I'll grab Alien Magic as well. Uh, Garden, of course, excellent. Best item you can find for this character. And I'll take Attack Speed. Here, I could start building Dodge. Yeah, 12 dodge gets us a third of the way to dodge cap, which is pretty nice. Let's buy this and combine and buy this. Minus three armor for 25% damage. That will help with our burning damage a lot, so I think it's still worth it. We can now go to a level four flamethrower before wave 12. I think that's got to be good, and I'll lock these two items. Hopefully the flamethrowers will do enough damage to kill the elite, but... If not, we can hopefully just tank through it. Just trying to make sure the Elite is always on fire, but stay away from it enough that I'm not in danger of dying. I think that strategy is not going to work to kill it, though, so we're just going to not worry about killing the Elite. The Flamethrower build gave me some hope that, hey, maybe we can kill the Elite, but... Typically on Farmer, you're not going to kill Elites that you see, so I'm not too worried about missing out on this one. On most economy characters, it's really difficult to actually clear Elites. Had to stop there, but let's definitely try to get that loot alien. Nope, didn't quite make it to get him. Uh, I'll take some more attack speed, because why not? We'll take this and this, and roll again. Take this metal, and more alien magic for sure. The plus one engineering, we do have two landmines and a bunch of other stuff already. I think I'll actually spend 29 on this engineering. Basically, we could re-roll and try to lock something, or we could just wait for the shop to turn over and give us the free re-roll. We might save a little money on locking stuff, but I don't think we would save 29. Like, the likelihood of locking enough stuff to save that much money, I think, is pretty low. So, just spending that money on the free one engineering is better than re-rolling and then locking, I think. running around here trying to break all these trees. Of 
Of course, every tree I, I break can set more enemies on fire. I tend to think the elemental builds are not that strong, honestly, but they're so satisfying. I think people go for them even when they shouldn't, and I, I can't blame them. I'm going to grab some more HP here. Yep, more elemental damage. Armor, let's roll. And I don't really want anything here. I'm going to grab crit chance and dodge. Minus three speed. Our speed is really good, so I can, I can buy one elemental damage for minus three speed here, and I think that's totally fine. Grab this and this as well, and throw in one more reroll, and I'm going to lock all of these items. That's great. We get to fight an elite here, so hopefully we have the damage, or the HP to survive. Whenever we break one of those slugs, we need to stick in the neighborhood to prevent too many of the summons from stacking up. As always, we want to be cognizant of trying to step on the consumables if it's easy to do without compromising our character in any way. Um, if it we, if it's going to cause us problems, then we just avoid them. Th then we don't prioritize that. It's much more important that we don't take damage, especially because we have Triangle of Power. Then that we pick up every consumable. Here I'm going to probably just grab more attack speed, we'll upgrade our pruner, buy this whole shop, roll again. Baby with a beard would be cool if we had ranged damage, but we're using elemental damage. On the other hand, especially for this build, but in general for the farmer, I think candle is actually worth considering on only this character basically, because we get all of our money from harvesting. We don't need enemies on the field. So reducing the number of enemy spawns is actually an advantage for this character, unlike every other character in the game. We do have a couple baby with the beard items because uh, even, you know, incre or gentle alien items because increasing enemy spawns is still fine. Like it's still good for this character, but um, this is one of the few characters it's worth considering Candle on. And especially because we are building elemental damage, I'm going to buy it. And because we don't get to buy it that often. Tree is really good when we're going for the Pocket Factory Lumberjack shirt combo. Grab this as well. Burning activates faster. Incredibly important for burning builds, so that's great. I don't go elemental builds that often, so... I'm hoping I didn't just automatic, like on autopilot, skip past some of those previously. The, uh, the Brotato community I have found to be incredibly supportive and friendly for the most part, but if I say something like, if I do something like skip past a burning build or forget what character I'm playing when I'm playing the entrepreneur, it sure does get some, some nerds undies in a bundle. <laughs> On the other hand, don't worry, this is nothing compared to my origins in the deep in the pits of League of Legends, so... <laughs> I'm sorry, Brotato people. There's there's just no rage that you can express that comes close to League of Legends rage, no matter how hard you try. Alright, we'll take elemental damage here. More trees for sure. Upgrade the pruner. And at this point, I'm actually going to recycle this flamethrower. And we'll just stick with, with the one level four flamethrower. Upgrade another pruner. Um, yep, we'll go for the bowler hat. That's incredibly good and the pruner, and I'll lock in this alloy. Good for melee damage and elemental damage, which we use both of. I would love to increase my dodge and armor as well, but just getting our, our damage up at this point is pretty good on account of how the, the build has kind of worked out. Having only one level four flamethrower is 
in many ways an advantage because there's no chance of the level 2 flamethrower applying its fire. Um, and while the higher level burning damage usually overwrites the lower level burning damage, I have found that in this that the way that that works in this game is not always consistent. So just having one burning effect that's always the one that's on and is the highest damage one I have found to be one of the best ways to use burning weapons. You can see though why I rated the flamethrower as S tier in my weapon tier list, which should have gone up before this video did, because it can just very easily carry away a run all by itself. Let's grab this fertilizer as well, and I'll continue to buy max HP. I wouldn't mind the elemental damage, but I'm not going to turn down a level 3 maximum HP. Grab this and this and this and roll, and regeneration potion is going to be really good. White flag, similarly, reduced enemy spawns is still totally fine for this character, so we'll grab that. And adrenaline, because I want to increase my dodge. I'm not going to buy little frog, even with the bonus to our harvesting, because increasing my dodge is the most important thing to me at this moment. Ticking for 50 every second is just not going to be enough to kill the elite, so we're not going to worry about that. This is one of the harder elites to just avoid, so hopefully we can manage to do that. But at least it's not one of the ones that actually charges at you. This one's just going to follow me slowly around. It will make a lot of the area hostile, and we're going to have to be very careful about where we stand in its rings, but for the most part we should be okay to just move around. Oh, I've taken so much damage from the stupid rings, because I'm, I'm doing this dodging really badly. You want to be moving towards the elite, which is much easier to do when you're actually trying to kill it, which is why I say this is one of the, the hardest elites to just avoid. Because right now I'm having to watch all the enemies close to me rather than watch the elite, so I'm never 100% sure of where to stand to keep the elite uh, firing its rings past me. Basically, that elite will always fire its rings of shots away from itself, so whenever it's attacking, you want to be moving towards it, because then you cross over the inner side of the ring and don't get hit. I'm going to recycle this, because we have Triangle of Power, and I'll grab this, and grab this, and here I'll take uh, just some more maximum HP so we don't die. Everyone, I hope, is very proud of me for remembering not to take a damage per second item when we have Triangle of Power. That has been a problem in the past. I will, I'm going to boost my lifesteal as well, because we still do have this flamethrower that attacks so frequently. It can be a significant source of healing. Burning eye surgery is incredible, obviously. Multiples of those is even better. Sure, I'll level up my pruner to level 4. Do I want four, five max HP for minus 15 range? I mean, we do still use the melee damage, so I'm going to grab that. And then, yep, another tree. Vigilante Ring, unfortunately, will not have time to pay off. But Snake, on the other hand, will be really good. So let's grab that. Looking for primarily defensive stats at this point. This wave does get a little harder because the healing aliens counteract our damage over time pretty well. On the other hand, our harvesting is insane. So, you know, we can't complain too much. I do feel like, as a farmer, you would typically want to avoid flamethrowers because they'd burn your crops down, but apparently this particular farmer is, is just completely blind to the risk. I'm going to take this uh, armor here because all, all we really want is defensive stats at this point, although a level 4 elemental damage I'll definitely take. Take the snake and roll again. Bait is still going to be good, extra damage is always great. 
armor and engineering from the robot arm is incredible, even if it doesn't help with our, you know, reduces our healing stats, but six armor is going to prevent us from dying so many more times than the 2% lifesteal would. Dangerous Bunny will not pay for itself before the end of the game, so we are going to roll past it. Let's take the panda, though, because 12 max HP, really nice. Roll again, and nothing here. I'll throw in one more reroll, see if we can get anything good. We'll grab another snake and an alien magic. Both of those will be really powerful for us. Our flamethrower is now actually doing four damage crits on its normal attack. So still not somehow not impressing on its normal attack, but the burning damage is so effective. And we, because we have two eye surgeries, the, uh, the burning damage ticks so much faster that it's actually a decent defensive ability. I do wish there was an easy way to see how much damage something like your pocket factory had done at the end of the level. Or even just, I mean, a consistent complaint I have is that if you're going, say, wrenches, the damage does not, on the wrench, only accounts for the damage the wrench actually did by attacking. It does not account for the turret's damage. So there's no good way to know how well your constructs are performing. Uh, sure, I'll take some more of that. We don't have any explosions. I'll, I guess we do, actually. I'll take that. And I'll take some lifesteal just to keep us alive. Roll into these. Rolling past this because I, I actually want to increase my lifesteal. Landmines, sure. HP regen and engineering. Capping our speed is fine. We're not going to increase our speed anyways. Lure is interesting. It's basically just buying 3 HP regeneration. So I'll buy Schmoop instead. And Alienize could be decent damage. Roll once more, see if we get anything. Nothing particularly good, but we'll take a Peaceful B. 4% dodge might save us. I'll roll again just to see what sort of fun stuff we're passing up on. Actually, this would have been a really good shop. But finishing with 100 luck and a bunch of other stuff feels pretty good. Make sure everything is burning. Mostly because it slows the movement speed. Trying to avoid tanking damage to make sure that my clear potential is still high. That will be the thing that keeps us safe the most. Obviously on this character build, the triangle of power damage loss is one of the ways that we could lose this game. Explosion size on landmines is so incredible. Look how big those explosions are. If you could somehow guarantee getting explosion size, Landmines would be an incredibly solid item. Unfortunately, there's no way to do that except for certain classes, and those classes are not the best with the screwdriver. I'm always looking for ways to use the screwdriver, though, so let me know your favorite screwdriver builds in the chat. Fourteen seconds remaining, setting everything on fire. As always with this boss, you want to stay near the octopus head boss, because the circle attack is moving slowest at the center of its radius. So that's just a little dodge tip there. And there we go, that's the farmer. All right, my friends, I hope you have enjoyed this look at the farmer and also at how the flamethrower can be an incredibly strong item that you can add into pretty much any build if you find it early. If you've enjoyed the video, or even if you haven't, do feel free to leave a comment, rate the video, likes and dislikes, both appreciated. They let me know what to do better or worse next time. And as always, you can subscribe to my channel for more of this and other strategy game content. Thanks for watching, my friends. GG.